All right, so we're going to start this section out by talking about how to write ionic compound formulas. So, you know, the name of it is naming them, but um, really it makes more sense, I think, to start out by just being able to write the formula and then being able to name it because we're going to have three videos on naming here and, and then this one to start out. So there'll be four total, but this is, I think, a good place to begin. So in the last section, we talked about how we can know if something is ionic or covalent. And so if you see a metal and a nonmetal, it's ionic. And so that's what we're looking at here, stuff with metals and nonmetals paired together. Or, and this will come up in the very last video I make, if you see a polyatomic ion present. So I'll talk more about those later. But be aware that there's kind of a, I, I, I threw this in the definition at the very beginning when I first talked about what ionic compounds are, like how you can tell what they are. I've been avoiding polyatomic ions. They're going to be the last thing I talk about with this. So. Um, we're going to start out just how to write formulas, and we're going to work with just the ions we know, and we're going to build from there. So I'm going to have a video on the transition metals. I'm going to have a video on the polyatomic ions, um, and those will be the last two I make. So those are kind of like the final details we're going to fold into this idea. So um, first, just how we write these formulas. So we can use periodic table, and we can know the charges of our monatomic ions. So monatomic means one atom. Got one atom in there. If it's polyatomic, it's got two or more. Simple as that. So we're going to start out very simple. You know, we're just going to keep working on the uh, the bread here. We're not quite into the meat yet. So we're we're eating the sandwich in a very weird way, I know, but it's okay. So you know, if we have a um, ionic compound like um, lithium chloride, LiCl. That would be the formula. So we're just going to start out right off the bat. You know, here's a formula. And so what is the charge of our lithium ion? What's the charge of our chlorine ion? And I'm not going to draw the dots here. I'm just going to write the charges. So these aren't dot structures. This is just regular ion notation. So lithium has one valence electron. So when it becomes an ion, it just gets rid of one electron. And it becomes a plus one. Okay. And chlorine is going to add an electron and become a minus one. So it only needs one, and then it fills its shell. Lithium only needs to get rid of one, and it empties its shell. So, this is an example of a formula. Now there's a couple details with this. We always write our formula cation, and then anion. So we have the positive charge thing first, which is what we have here. We have the negative charge thing last, which we have here. And then, um, all charges sum to zero. So we have a plus one, and we add to that a minus one, and that gets us a zero. That's what we're talking about here. So this isn't like Li2Cl. All right. And then the last trick. And we're going to practice this a little bit, but you know, I'm going to lay out the rules. So we always go cation first, then anion second. And this is something that's going to carry into naming as well. All the charges are going to sum to zero. So that's why we have those little little uh, subscripts sometimes, like twos and threes. If there's no subscript, it's a one. Why do we not write one? You know why we don't write one, because chemists are lazy. Now, if you try to say it to any other chemist department, apparently they don't take it well. Um, I wear it like a badge of honor. Just be aware. You talk to any other chemists, eh, maybe maybe uh, keep that one in the back pocket. All right, so what's the last trick here? Oh, yeah, so no common denominators. So there's no common denominator for the subscripts. So for example, what do I mean here? LiCl? Good. That's a 1 and a 1. I mean, you know, common denominator 1, what can you do? But if we have something like Li2Cl2, that's bad. Because this is a 2 and a 2. 
they have a common denominator of 2. So we want to always make sure it's the lowest common denominator set. So if you can divide these by the same number, you just do that. So if that ever comes up, there's going to be a trick I show you in a little bit here. So, this is a very simple example. Let's, let's scale it up. And I'm going to show you a cool trick when we scale it up too. So let's do another example here of writing a formula. Let's say we have the magnesium ion and we're going to make an ionic compound with the oxide anion, so oxygen with two electrons. So these are the charges of our ions. Magnesium is going to lose one, two, so it becomes a plus two. Oxygen is going to pick up one, two. Oh, this isn't going to work too well at all. All right, well, I can't show the trick yet. Uh, there's really no point, right? So what does this become? MgO plus two, you know, minus two is going to equal zero. So we only need one of each. And uh, so that's it. And then we write cation first, positive charge thing first, negative charge thing second. And there's no common denominator. It's one to one. All right. So now let's do a little bit more complicated example. This is what I get for choosing magnesium when aluminum is the one that should do the job. We'll keep oxygen in there. So we look at aluminum. Whoops. Right here. It loses one, two, three to empty out. So one, two, three empties out the valence shell. Oxygen still picks up two. Okay. So we've got to get these to sum to zero. Now here's the trick. We can just take these numbers and make them the subscripts. Now, don't have a subscript of the negative 2. I want to be clear about that. <laughs> you don't have a negative subscript. What you want to do is you just have two aluminums, is what we're saying. So this was negative 2. Well, that means there's two aluminums. And then there's three oxygens. Do that little diagonal switchy-switchy trick. All right? And so now what I have is I have two times plus 3, and I'm going to add to that 3 times negative 2, because each of these are negative 2, but I have 3 of them, so that means I have a total of negative 6 here. Each of these by themselves will be plus 3, but I have 2 of them, so that's going to be plus 6, and it equals 0. So our charge works, and again, positive thing first, negative thing second. So cation, then the anion. All right, and so that's our formula. Now there is a pitfall to a little diagonal trick. So let's look at that magnesium oxide again. Let's say I do the diagonal trick here. Well, I'm going to get Mg2O2. Do you see the problem with this? So if I look at it, first off, the charges are still going to work out. So if you're just like, oh, the problem is it's not a zero charge, that's not it. It's still going to be a zero charge. So I'll have 2 times plus 2 plus 2 times negative 2. That's still going to equal zero. So do you see the problem yet? Right there. Remember it was MgO before? There's a common denominator between these twos. So I have to take an extra step. I have to recognize that common denominator and just call it MgO. So beware, when you do this diagonal trick, if there's a common denominator, like if you have a 4 and a 2, or a 3 and a 6, or something like that, you've got to cut through by the common denominator. So just a heads up on that. But that is um, every trick you need to write uh, an ionic compound. And what we're going to do is just add details to this idea. So now we're going to go backwards. You know, we're going to go, well, if I give you this, can you name it? I, haven't, I, I was saying the names, but I didn't tell you how to name them yet. And that's going to be the next video. So, uh, after that, we'll talk about transition metals, and then we'll bring polyatomic ions into the mix. And all it is, is just building on this same basic concept. We write a formula in a way where there's zero charge, and no common denominator in our subscripts. So, um, yeah, make sure this makes sense before we move on to the next one. 
and uh, you know there's, there should be some practice worksheets for it too. Um, maybe you know before you work on the worksheet, you probably definitely want to do the naming first because it's going to have you switch back and forth between the two. But um, yeah, so this is the core concept here.